this is Joe Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you, and this episode is dedicated for you guys that live in the Phoenix area, Tucson, anywhere around this area. Where I'm at today is at Velarde Gardens, and this is a wholesale only nursery, so if you're just like a home grower, you can't come here, you won't be here like I am. I got a special invite today because I'm making a video for you guys. And I wanna be able to show you know what the local growers do. Like this is one of my favorite local growers here because they grow all natural, chemical free, right? And that's important to me. And I know it's important for a lot of you guys. Like if you guys go to a big box store and just get those Bonnie plant starts right, don't kid yourself. They spray those things and they won't even tell people what they're spraying on them. And that's really terrible. So that's why I like to support local growers like this today, you know, uh, Velarde Gardens. Now, the other thing is that uh, here at Velarde Gardens, they grow the crops that are gonna grow at the time, at the right season. Like I'm in here, in here at July, and July is like the middle of the summer. It's like 100 plus degrees out today, and most people say, you can't plant in Arizona or Las Vegas in the middle of summer, it's too hot. Bull honky, if you guys have the right plants, right? You guys have the plants that are naturalized to grow in this style weather, you guys could grow any time of year. So what I'm gonna show you guys right now is some of the plants that actually you could plant right now in the garden. It's not too late to grow in uh, Phoenix, Las Vegas, or you know, uh, surrounding and similar areas if you plant the right stuff. And Velarde Gardens got you guys covered all year round. Before I go on, I wanna let you guys know where to get her plants. You can visit uh, Velarde Gardens, V-I-L-A-R-D-I gardens.com. And on there is a list of different retailers so uh, local nurseries that you could go to to buy these plant starts. And when you go to those nurseries, make sure you ask for the Velarde Gardens plant starts. Those are the only ones I recommend in town. So let me go ahead and show you guys actually some of the plants they got growing here and actually some of the stuff that I'm actually gonna pick up and take back to Las Vegas with me today. So as you guys can see, they got all these uh, peppers here. These peppers, they look amazing. And these guys are in like uh, three and a half inch pots. And I wanna show you guys one of these guys. Look at this, this is a nice, healthy plant, all natural grown, no chemicals used. And we're just gonna go ahead and pop this guy up. And I wanna show you guys this. Look at that root structure. This are really nice roots. Look at that, they're not like impacted, they're not like growing around in circles. These guys are ready to grow into the ground at your house once you get them there. So that's very important. So I like that they're not selling like plants that are like too old, right? Because if you guys get like root bound plants, they're not gonna do well. So that means you're not gonna have a high probability of success. Now, as much as I'm buying plants today, I encourage you guys to start things from seed. But you know, in the middle of the July, I don't recommend starting your pepper seeds in the middle of July. <laughs> it's way too late, but it's not too late to buy plant starts because these guys have been growing for like, uh, I don't know, 60 days at minimum to get to this height. So these were started a long time ago. So I'm glad I could support local growers that are growing natural, chemical free, and even more importantly, unique varieties of crops that you're just not gonna get at a standard big box store. So yeah, this variety right here, this is called the Ancho Pepper. Actually, I've grown this one before. This does great in the heat. Let's go ahead and continue down and see what other kind of cool things I could find here. Looks like they got lots of peppers here. Oh, my favorite to grow in the desert. This is the hibiscus. And the hibiscus, this makes edible leaves. So this is an edible leafy green to grow in the desert in summertime. And I encourage you guys, you know, my channel is called Growing Your Greens. It's called Growing Your Greens for a reason. Because I want you guys to grow greens all year round. My goal every day that I wake up, <laughs> and hopefully I still wake up every day, is eat two pounds of leafy greens. That's a lot of greenage to eat. I might juice a pound like I just drank a juice on the way over here. And, uh, you know, you could really cram in the greens if you're juicing them. Like one pound of juice will equal just one cup of juice to drink. And this one's an amazing uh, juice to make out of these greens that kind of taste like lemony. So it'd be good to like, these leaves here combined with some pineapple juice like made fresh, it'd be amazing. It tastes like a, a lemonade because this kind of has that like lemon tang. The pineapple will give you guys a sweetness. So I'm definitely gonna be picking up a bunch of these guys today. Of course, another green for the desert uh, that's really good to grow this time of year are these guys. Let me see if I could pull one out for you guys. This guy right here, this is the Golden Globe Purslane. So this is not that standard Purslane weed that might be coming up in your garden, which you guys can't eat. This is a Golden Purslane. And look at this, this grows tall and large and nice large leaves. And I wanna encourage you guys to grow and eat your Purslane. You can just pick off the leaves and eat them raw, put them in a salad, you could juice them up, you could blend them in a blender with some bananas for a green smoothie. They're totally delicious. And these are high in omega-3 fatty acids. You guys could also eat the purslane seeds that it's soon going to seed. 
They're also high in omega-3s that are very important because they're good for anti-inflammation or anti-inflammatory. Let's go ahead and uh, I gotta get a flat here, start filling it up and I'll come back at you when I got some more cool plants to show you. So another plant that I'm gonna pick out today that I'm gonna be growing in Vegas and that's gonna do great in Phoenix as well because it's a drought tolerant plant. So you don't need to like water it every day. Actually, if you water every day, it might not do so well, of course, if it gets really hot and your soil gets dried out. It doesn't like dry soil for too long either. And that's one of my favorite herbs. It's known as basil. And a lot of you guys, if you guys go down to buy basil, you might get the Genovese basil or the standard Italian basil. Like to me, those are so blase, passe, like, just don't grow like the standard basil. You want to grow different kinds of basil. The challenge you guys will have is that a lot of places, unfortunately, only propagate and sell the standard Italian varieties of basil, but not here. Here they have at least a dozen different varieties of basil here. I'll go over a couple of them quickly with you guys. They got the uh, Mrs. Burns lemon basil. They got the uh, cinnamon basil. They got a lime basil, a red Reuben basil a holy red and green basil, a samami holy basil, a lakshmi holy basil, uh, they got the standard Genovese basil, and a cinnamon basil, oh, and then my favorite, of course, right down here, this is the uh, Thai basil. And each of these basils have unique and different flavor profiles. So if you guys are chefs, you guys want to have different pl flavor profiles depending on what kind of food you're cooking. Like if you're cooking like, you know, a vegetable based dish, you're going to want to have this flavor profile. And if you're doing some kind of meat dish or grain dish, you might want to have like a different flavor. So growing more varieties of basil, you'll have different flavors for your palate if you're a chef and to be able to harvest from and make different creations. So like you can make a pesto from the cinnamon basil, it's going to taste totally different than one from the holy basil. And I kind of prefer the ones for the, from the holy basils because those are more stronger tasting medicinal basils that are really good to eat. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get a variety of different basils so I could grow them in my garden. Plus the other thing is the more different kinds and varieties you guys could grow, the more resiliency you build into your garden because some kinds of basil, like I know the Thai basil, that's a more resilient basil than standard Italian basil. They, they've always done well in the heat in my garden. So that's the one that I recommend for you guys the most, the uh, sweet Thai. So another crop I wanna really encourage you guys to plant that unfortunately is not so popular unless you're from the South and it is this guy, this is known as the okra. And this is probably my favorite variety of okra. It's actually a red variety of okra instead of the standard variety, it kind of makes a red pod. So, you know, we want to eat deeply, richly colored pigmented foods and the red okra will do that. It tastes just like okra, but it's red pigmented. So it has more, you know, uh, antioxidants in there for you guys. It helps, keeps you young and can help ward off disease. And okra is one of the plants that does amazing in the desert, does amazing in the heat. It actually loves the heat and it grows better when the heat is on. And so like in cooler climates, okra does not perform as well. I experienced this when I grew in Northern California, the okra it never really produced well, but in, you know, high climates like the desert, they do amazing. Uh, you know, the South, Texas would do well, you know, I mean, all the, the Southern states, okra does amazing. And okra is really delicious. A lot of people may like think you have to cook up okra to eat it, but if you catch it just right when they're young and baby and small and tender, you could just eat them right off the plant. They're absolutely delicious, just cut up fresh in salads. Now, when my okra gets too big, I might let some go to seed and save my seeds so I could grow those out for next year. But the other thing I like to do is I like to make okra juice. So if I remember, I'll post a link down below to a video where I juiced old mature okra and I made green slime that is edible. But also if you got kids, you could play with it. And this slime was like that slime that came out of a jar, but this was 100% organic, natural, just juice of the okra. It came out really mucilaginous. So, you know, this is a property in the okra that helps it fend off the heat, but also can help us, especially for people that have maybe blood sugar issues, this can help you with it, that. But yeah, okra, one amazing plant. I encourage you guys to grow it. Let's see if I can find another one. No, right, another one. Another one of my favorites ones right here. This is another green, leafy green you guys have to grow. You must grow this in the uh, summertime. And this is known as the uh, Malbar spinach. And this is my favorite kind of Malbar spinach because it has the red stem, not just the standard uh, green stem. And you guys are only gonna find this at local growers like we're here at today, you know, big box growers and all this. They're not specializing in some of these more uncommon plants because they try to have plants that are gonna do well everywhere. And they sell the same, you know, varieties of peppers and tomatoes. 
whether you're in Phoenix or whether you're in you know Michigan or Florida but it's really these local growers that has you know seed stock collections and gets feedbacks from other local people to find out which varieties grow the best so they grow the ones that are going to grow the best because they want to sell you ones the ones that are going to do good for you that so that you're successful so that next year you're going to come back to your local growers like I'm at today and I could tell by the looks of these plants and you know how they look that these plants are entirely healthy and I mean these are the ones that I'm actually picking up today I'm personally not picking up any Malbar spinach today because these guys reseed on their own in your garden so once you grow a handful of these last year I got like six plants I grew them they grew really big I turned the little berries into juice which was amazing it dropped a lot of seed I saved a lot of seed I sent a lot of seed out to you guys but also the seed just actually started sprouting up on their own in the garden now here's the trick right people don't understand like John this little seedlings gonna cost me whatever like 350 or whatever right you don't understand like how much time it took for the Malabar spinach to get to this size right in my garden like a month ago they popped out of the ground they had two leaves on it another month then they're like this much bigger this is probably looking at like three months so three dollars is gonna save you like three months of time how much is your guys's time worth right my time is worth a lot more than you know waiting for my seeds to come up and dealing with them if they're not auto germinating like they dropped in the garden they came up on their own and I, I love seeds like that and that, these are one of them but this you don't understand like it takes a lot of time to start seeds and get them to be healthy and germinate properly and grow properly like I've met a lot of gardeners especially new gardeners that have tried to like grow seeds and I'm not that I'm discouraging that but you grow your seeds and they have long spindly plants that just never really do right and if you have long spindly plants when they're young and then you try to grow them larger you're not going to be successful because if the plants are not healthy when they're young they're not going to be as healthy or grow to their full genetic potential when they're older and that's why I love this nursery because all the plants here are totally healthy so you have the highest probability of having a successful garden I mean it's already hard enough to grow in the desert in Phoenix or Las Vegas so why not put all the odds in your favor by starting with healthy plants like I'm getting here today. So another leafy green guys must grow here in Phoenix is this guy. I mean, this is, I mean, before you grow any of the other leafy greens as much as I like them, you have to grow this guy. This is known as Moringa. Now this guy is really valuable because this looks like a little plant now and a little vegetable plant like some of the other ones. But this one grows into a full size tree. What you guys are gonna do in the winter time here in Phoenix is before it gets too cold is uh, trim this back, you know, maybe like five feet tall, cut it back because it doesn't take cold well as long as you don't freeze it's going to stay alive in the root zone if you guys live in other areas you're going to want to cut it back to the ground mulch it heavily and maybe just maybe if it didn't get too cold in the winter it's going to come back and grow back next season but here in phoenix and other tropical locations like south florida this guy will grow year round and all these greens that you guys are seeing are totally edible so this tree produces edible leaves it's higher in calcium than even carrots and more nutritious than kale they say and but you guys could grow this year round so if you guys don't live in an area you know like Phoenix where it doesn't get super cold you guys can grow this as an annual so you're gonna grow this uh, grow it out in the summertime and then you know uh, either bring it inside for the winter or plant it again the following summer and save and collect your seeds if your plant does go to seed or just start new seeds but here it's gonna grow as a perennial so like my friend Jake Mace that the previous video was on he has moringa trees that are like 20 feet tall producing seeds that can help purify water and that could you you know you could uh, give away and propagate to other people so valuable and the greens are also valuable i actually had moringa green shots and i encourage you guys to do moringa green shots instead of wheatgrass shots because i mean when it, you plant a tree and it just grows automatically you have food 365 days a year no matter what and it's only available you know because of places like velarde gardens that make these nice, beautiful, healthy plants, you know, and go through the painstaking process of growing them for you so that you guys don't have to. And this is why I like local nurseries. This is why I'm here today to support them and get some of my own plant starts as well. So besides the greens that I really like, you know, one of my favorite fruits to grow in the desert are cucumbers, but not any kind of cucumber is gonna do well. And they know this here at Velarde Garden. So they sell you the variety they're gonna do well. And so I'm glad to see that they sell the variety that I like to grow, the Armenian cucumbers, but they just don't have that standard light skin Armenian cucumber. They have the really cool striped Armenian cucumbers. And this is one of the ones that they sell. This is called the uh, Met Key Dark Armenian. Look at that cucumber. I mean, it looks like a little snurpent snake. 
Now these guys don't bite you, <laughs> and even better than biting you, when you eat them and you bite into them, you're gonna get an amazing sweetness that you haven't gotten in any cucumber. They love, these cucumbers, you know, are from Armenia. They love the heat, and they sweeten up really good. Even if they get really big, like I've had some huge Armenian cucumbers, they get really sweet, and the way I like to use them is when they're small, I pick them, and I just chop them up and use them fresh into salads. They have an amazing flavor. The small ones, they could also be pickled. They're amazing. Now when the seeds get a little bit too big, they kind of get hollow, more like a melon, and that's all right. The seeds are mature. You could actually replant your seeds for next year. Instead, what I do is actually I take the whole fruits, even if they're super huge, right? They're still good. Don't throw them away. Don't feed them to your compost pile. Take the big fruits and throw them through your juicer. And then you're gonna make some amazing cucumber juice, 100% juice, and it is gonna taste sweet. It is gonna taste amazing. And like the cucumber juice is my favorite juice to drink in a hot summer's day to cool me off. And the only thing about today is that I wish I had some hot Armenian cucumber juice to cool me off because I don't. So yeah, I'm gonna be picking up a whole bunch of these Armenian cucumbers uh, to plant out in my very garden. So another reason why I like local growers like Velarde Gardens is because they're gonna offer you guys plants that you literally can't get anywhere else unless you order them online. And I always want you, want you guys to start with plants locally sourced because they're gonna be healthier. So the next one that I'm gonna talk about today is known as the Egyptian walking onions. So if you, like, you guys like onions like I do, and if you don't, you guys should like onions, especially the Egyptian walking onions because these are the easiest onions there are to grow like anywhere. I grow these in the desert in Las Vegas. I've been growing them, I planted them once like two years ago. They're still alive after two years. These are onions you don't have to keep replanting year after year. So you plant these Egyptian walking onions that are more of a wild onion than a cultivated onion, and they basically grow like this, and what'll happen is, the end of the year, they'll make top sets. So the top sets are like little baby onion bulbs that you can actually harvest and eat. They're delicious, but also what happens is, the top sets, these get heavy, they actually uh, dump over, and then the top sets hit the ground, and then they root in the ground, and they grow new onions. So actually, that's kind of like they walk. It's like walking like an Egyptian, right? Like the song, the Bengals in the 80s, get it? All right, so anyways, these guys will walk across your yard, walk across the field, walk across the raised bed. So I give these one whole raised bed so that I have these delicious onion greens to eat year round, as well as I could dig up the onion bulbs underneath the ground, which are, you know, a lot smaller than standard onions, but you could still eat them. And because you have so many, dig a couple up once in a while. But here's the tip. I wanna let you guys know that you guys wanna eat the onion greens because they are more nutritious than the onion bulbs that most people eat. The onion greens are rich in chlorophyll. They also have the same you know, phytonutrients and phytochemicals that have been shown to be uh, cancer protective and anti-cancer you know, as the onions are. So yeah, I'm glad that they have the uh, Egyptian walking onions, a good price, so you wanna get these for sure if it's like the only onion you buy and dedicate a space to these guys. So another plant that will grow really well here in the desert and many places around the country, depending on where you live, are these guys. Now these guys might look like vegetables to you, but these are actually fruits. And these fruit are a rare fruit at that. And if you guys are maybe from like uh, the Mediterranean, you guys might know these plants. These are known as capers. So you guys know that, you know, uh, live in the desert like olive trees. They grow really well in the desert, right? And when you go to the store in the olive section, what's next to the olives? The capers. The capers are an another uh, Mediterranean style berry that gets preserved and we could use in food and they're amazing in flavor and also offer many different uh, polyphenols and antioxidants and specialized compounds that are good for us. And uh, fresh capers are like no other. You guys have to try them if you've never tried them before. And I'm glad that they're actually offering the caper plants here because for those of you guys that have researched capers like I have, like the caper seeds, like you could get the caper seeds, no problem. The problem is getting caper seeds to germinate. They have a very low, uh, you know, germination rate. So you may not be successful. You could waste a lots of time trying to buy capers online and get caper plants and all this kind of stuff. But why do that when Velarde Gardens here has done all the hard work for you? You guys don't understand. This could be like a half years of work just to get it to this size, right? And so when you buy a caper plant, right, you're, you're saving yourself time, headaches, and worries. And you guys could have a perennial, because this will grow year round, come back year after year, even if it might die back in the winter, and uh, produce you guys caper fruit. Now, this guy looks small now, but in future years, this could get massive, a big massive bush. 
And you know, I really like that uh, Velarde Gardens works on spreading different genetics and genetic diversity out to the world. And I want you guys to get some of these local plants if you guys live here in Phoenix. I think I myself, is, I'm probably gonna bring home uh, one or two caver plants to try my hand at. So as you guys can see, what we have here are lots of tomatoes. Now these guys are not yet for sale. You know, Velarde Gardens will sell no tomato or no plant before it's time. So they wanna make sure it's at its good, healthy state and ready for you guys to be successful with in your garden before they sell it. So, you know, once again, they're planting these guys out. They got this under protection nets so that no bugs and things get in them. So they don't have to spray them with nasty chemicals like some other nurseries you know, big nurseries, they just spray stuff because, you know, they're not concerned about growing something natural and pesticide free, right? But they're really concerned about that here. So I appreciate that they're taking steps to, you know, exclude bugs and things like that without using toxic chemicals. And this is why I encourage you guys most times to support your local growers. They're going to be more into that than major large corporations that doesn't give a shit about your guys' health, but they just care about their profits. So it's more than just profits here at Velarde Gardens. And look at these little baby tomato plant starts. Now here in Phoenix, you, could got, you guys could plant these in the fall and they'll still be producing. And that's amazing. Now I don't recommend this for doing everywhere, but if you're in Phoenix, you guys are lucky. You could grow tomatoes in the fall and you know uh, get some tomatoes before the uh, cold winter weather uh, sets in. But yeah, these guys will soon be available at a local nursery near you. Um, if you guys want to get some of these Velarde plant starts, make sure you visit uh, VelardeGardens.com online and then you're going to get a list of all the local nurseries here in Phoenix that sell the plant starts. And when you go to the nurseries, make sure you ask, hey, I want to get the Velarde plant starts. John Kohler on Growing Your Green said they're good and I've, I've seen them all. I inspected this place. It looks amazing. They got some good compost going on that they're mixing their seedlings up in. And I mean, I'm getting, actually, I'll show you guys in a second. Actually, let me go ahead and show you guys what I'm buying because I got to get out of here and get on the road. So basically what I got is I got two and a half flats of stuff here. Um, basically, I got uh, two, fl two flats of uh, three and a half inch pots. I got mostly different kinds of basil because genetic diversity is important to me. And it's cool. They got some varieties of basil that I haven't seen anywhere else here. So I'm really happy about that. I got a couple pepper plants that I haven't seen. Of course, I got my favorite moringa. That's really important. I got the, um, oh, of course, I got that okra. I got lots of okra. I love okra. My girlfriend loves okra too, so I'm planting a lot of that stuff out. And then I got some of those, uh, the hibiscus, the edible hibiscus leaves, also very important to me. Oh, and uh, some moringa, some moringa trees. And then, of course, my half flat here. Um, you know, I started a bunch of cucumbers, and because I'm trellising them up and had some issues with the watering system on that side of the garden, they're having some challenges. So I got about a half a flat of those uh, striped Armenian cucumbers. Now that's what I'm bringing home to grow in my garden. And you guys could grow these same plants if you live in Phoenix or stop by a local nursery in Phoenix so that you guys could get them. Um, this nursery is only wholesale. So if you're like a nursery owner, yes, you guys could buy plants here. But other than that, visit the local nurseries to get your guys' plant starts. I've had a great time here at the nursery today. If you guys enjoyed this episode of the nursery, hey, please give me a thumbs up. I'll be sure to visit the nursery and show you guys more stuff at this nursery, how they do it and all this kind of stuff in future episodes when I am able to get back down to Phoenix. Also be sure to uh, click that subscribe button right down below to be notified of my new and upcoming episodes I have coming out about every three uh, to four days. And be sure to check my past episodes. I have a wealth of knowledge contained in over 1,100 videos now that will teach you guys all aspects of gardening. And because I live in the desert, a lot of my you know uh, desert gardening experience will directly affect you guys and of course I made a lot of videos also in the Phoenix area that may be valuable to you guys as well. So uh, once again my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time and until then remember keep on growing. Alright this is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com to do another exciting episode for you and what we're going to do today for you guys is thanks to uh, somebody on Fiverr that wanted to do a coaching session with me but instead of a coaching